On the 27th of May, 1794, a little boy was born in Staten Island, New York, named Cornelius. Cornelius Vanderbilt. Cornelius's mother and father were Dutch immigrants and they were extremely poor and they both worked as a servant to provide for their family. After a few years, Cornelius's mother gets a job in a farm and she gets paid a little bit more so things get a little bit easier for the family. On the other hand, Cornelius's father gets a job at a shipping yard and becomes an operator for small ships that go around New York City. They had a little bit more money, but they were still considered poor, which is why at 11 years old, Cornelius Vanderbilt leaves school so he can get a job alongside his father and help out the family with some cash. Cornelius worked as the ferry manager alongside his father, but he didn't like it. He knew he can make money other ways. Why should he work for someone when he can do it himself? Cornelius' mother had saved some money for the family, which is why Cornelius asked her if he could borrow $100 for a business idea. His mother declines the offer and says, no, we're saving money for the family. But Cornelius kept on asking and begging, and she said, fine, I'll give you $100, but I expect it back quickly. At this time, $100 is an insane amount of money. It's enough to buy a small ferry, which is exactly what Cornelius Vanderbilt did with the money. This was Cornelius' idea the whole time. He was always telling himself why should he work for someone that has a ferry when he can buy his own and do the same thing and make more money. Even though Vanderbilt had left school at 11 years old and wasn't very educated, but he was highly educated in business and he knew exactly what he's doing at a very early age. He quickly realized that if he wants to be successful in these ferry business, so the customers choose him over the others. He put the lowest price in that area for the ferry ride and customer after customer came begging for him. He had a mindset that he should reinvest 100% of his money back into the business and that's exactly what he did. Every cent he made, he first paid his mother off and he reinvested into more ferries, and another one, and another one, and another one. The amount of boats are going up exponentially, and Cornelius Vanderbilt is not even 18 years old, and he has tens of different ferries, with tens of different employees working for him. When Cornelius is only 18 years old, something huge happens. The War of 1812, which is a continuation of the American Revolutionary War. This was Cornelius' huge break because the US government win him a deal to send weapons and military supplies across the water. And since Cornelius Vanderbilt had an insane amount of boats in his fleet, he made a whole lot of money in this situation. One year later, Cornelius Vanderbilt marries his cousin named Sophia Johnson and they had 13 children together. It seems like Cornelius didn't care about his children because he had 13 of them and didn't really want to hang out with them whatsoever. He was only interested in expanding his business and making more money. When you get to the year 1820, Cornelius is extremely wealthy but not satisfied whatsoever. He needs to keep on going. This is the same time where steamboats are coming along and they're slowly replacing sailboats. Cornelius realizes this very quickly and starts buying steamboats over sailboats. While he's doing that, he's selling his sailboats at an extremely high price. So he's trading his old equipment for better and new equipment. The old sailboats were very slow and problematic and the steam engines had solved a lot of the issues. So it was a huge business move for Cornelius. As you move along, Cornelius Vanderbilt becomes very famous, but not with a good name. They call him the most ruthless businessman. What was the reason? Did he charge too much? No, Cornelius Vanderbilt would offer such low prices that he would paralyze the competition. It got to a point where Cornelius Vanderbilt was losing money on each transaction 
but that was his goal. He wanted to charge such low prices that his competition would go out of business and he would have less competition and buy their fleet. He would continue doing this until every standing company was bankrupt. He would be able to do this for years on end and lose money because he was so wealthy from the previous businesses. He calculated that he could lose money for one year straight and still not go bankrupt while every other company goes bankrupt. So every company would go bankrupt and Cornelius Vanderbilt was enjoying every second of it. You gotta imagine Vanderbilt would sit behind a chess table and he enjoyed destroying the opponent in this type of game. And he had one goal, to win it every single time. At the age of 30, even though Vanderbilt was much wealthier than most New York rich people, but they still wouldn't count them as one of them. He was from Staten Island and he had a weird accent and he wasn't that educated. They would also call him new money rather than old money. You could say Cornelius was getting a kick out of that because he was planning on a revenge on how to bankrupt these people and he wouldn't really pay attention anymore. He would sit behind the chess table and destroy the opponent one by one. We get to the year 1849. Cornelius Vanderbilt is about 55 years old and he's probably one of the most wealthy men in America. But just like before, he's not satisfied and he has to get his life together, in his opinion. Another opportunity is put in front of him. Successful people are opportunistic. Sometimes they don't use that opportunity to hurt other people. It just means that they don't let an opportunity slip away from them and they take advantage of it. Cornelius realizes that there is a gold rush in 1849 in California. People of America had realized that there is a lot of gold in California and most of them were in the East Coast and they had to move across the country to find all this gold. They would get to California in different mines, buy some shovels and pickaxes and start mining away. You might have heard this saying that the people that sold the pickaxes during the gold rush made much more money than the people that were mining for gold. This is true, but the person that made the most amount of money was Cornelius Vanderbilt. Was he looking for gold as well? No, he knew something better. He would get the people that wanted to look for gold to the destination. He realized that there's a whole lot of people wanting to move across the country. And he had a lot of transportation equipment to his disposal. So he created a route to take people from the east coast of the United States all the way to the west coast. You might say, how? Was there railroads at this time? No, this wasn't completely invented and set up in the country yet. He had a lot of ferries and he would take the ferry from the east coast all the way to the country of Nicaragua south of Mexico. In that country, they had to go a very small distance to the Pacific Ocean, where Cornelius Vanderbilt has a lot more other ferries. And from there, they could go to California through the Pacific Ocean. Cornelius was getting paid a whole lot because this was the biggest mass migration in the history of the world, where more than half a million of the population of a country in a very short period of time, move across the country, something that has never happened before. In the year 1853, when Vanderbilt is 59 years old, another interesting thing happens. He decides to go on vacation. A man that worked every single day since he was 11 years old. He never took a day off and he worked on weekends as well. When he told his family that he's going on vacation, they wouldn't believe him. They would think it's something to do with his business. But no, he really wanted to take a break. He bought the best yacht at that time and took his entire family to Europe. While he was away for a complete month, he had put his work to the people he trusted in his company and they were all in Nicaragua. But with all that, as soon as they realized Vanderbilt has left the US, they slowly started stealing from him. Cornelius very quickly realizes what his employees are doing with his money. He doesn't even get angry. He just writes one letter. 
which is extremely short. He writes, you have undertaken to cheat me. I won't sue you for the law is too slow. I'll ruin you. Signed, Cornelius Vanderbilt. The main offices of Vanderbilt was located in Nicaragua, and most of his employees that stole from him were in that country. He started off with the country. He told the countries around Nicaragua to not recognize that government because it was a puppet government. When this took place, you could say a revolution took place in this country, where even a civil war broke loose. This is in a country where most of the employees that screwed over Vanderbilt are still living in, and they're living alongside all these people going through a civil war. So when Vanderbilt told them, I'll ruin you, he truly meant it. There are a lot of people, when they get to the age of 60, they're considering retiring. But not for Cornelius Vanderbilt. It seems like his life just started and he still wanted to continue growing. Once again, another opportunity was put in front of Cornelius. This was the steam train, something very new. And as soon as he saw it, the idea popped up in his head. Do the same exact thing he did to the ferry business, the steamboat business, to the train business. Cornelius sold all his steamboats at a ridiculously high price because they were very high in demand and reinvested all that money into trains. Vanderbilt loved to monopolize every single thing he did and he wanted full control over everything. At the time Vanderbilt is expanding his railroad business, it's not like there's any big dogs in the business. It's usually businesses that have no more than two trains to their name. So it was very easy for Cornelius Vanderbilt to lower the prices once again and make these guys go bankrupt. When they go bankrupt, he was purchased their business and the trains they had in their fleet. Cornelius Vanderbilt had been doing this type of business all his life so he was getting pretty good at it. The railroad empire of the United States grew like this and Vanderbilt was the number one cause of it. Even though he started his railroad business after the age of 60, but this type of business made him 20 times more money than his previous businesses. Cornelius lived until the year 1877 and died at the age of 82 years old. After he died, in the New York newspapers, it said he had a net worth of a hundred million dollars. You might say this is not that much because all the rich people now have billions of dollars. But a hundred million dollars back then is more than 200 billion dollars today. But this 200 billion dollars is not the same money that Elon Musk has. A hundred million dollars at that time was one ninth the money the United States had. So you can't even compare his money to Elon Musk's $200 million. It's interesting to know that Cornelius Vanderbilt had more money than the US Treasury, and that should tell you something. Before Vanderbilt died, he had spread his wealth everywhere, but he gave most of it to one person, his son William Henry Vanderbilt. 90% of the Vanderbilt wealth went to William Henry Vanderbilt, and 10% went to the other 12 children. It's interesting to know that in his will, he believed that the 12 other children are not worthy to have this much wealth because they don't know what to do with it. Even though Cornelius Vanderbilt is known as the most ruthless businessman in history, but he's considered one of the men that built America. And there's not a whole lot of people on that list. One of those guys is Cornelius Vanderbilt himself. Henry Ford, Andrew Carnegie, JP Morgan, and some people even consider John D. Rockefeller on that list. These are the men that built America. And capitalism works like this kind of. It makes a normal Joe motivated to work extremely hard so they can take over an industry just to become rich. And before you know it, your country is getting more and more advanced. 